welcome to another wonderful episode of So Unprofessional. Yes. I'm Gus. And I'm, uh... Not as me. No, I am the real host of this show, and this is just Sasha Bob over here. I ain't got the Sasha it's, Bob here. It's Barksdale. Oh. Yeah. I mean, I'm the brains, the brawn, and you're just like the comic relief. Nah, it's more like, uh, I'm the Michael Jordan of this show, and you are like the Will Purdue. You're just here to get in and file out. That's not nice. I know, it's like, it's like I'm Shaq, and you're uh, Devin George. You're just there to pass me the ball. So pass the ball. I think I'm like Iverson, and you're like George Lynch. Yeah, that's why you're making the show lose until you <laughs> leave. And then, you know what I mean? Yeah. You like, well, you like Ben Simmons in the Toronto series. Ass. I'm yeah, like Jimmy anyway. Butler. Anyway, thank y'all for tuning in. And we got a great show lined up for y'all. All right, so this is something that you might be able to relate to. No. I can't relate to it, especially if you're about to say some gay shit. <laughs> so, so, so there's a story, Jennifer Gock. What? Her name's Gock. Anyway, she's a special ed teacher. Okay. From Delaware County. And did she sleep with her students? No. Oh, all right. She was just uh, locked up. She was charged with selling cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. So apparently she would she would leave school and, and on the way home she would just make dr drop off. Yo, I love her. I love her. Was she white? Yes. Did they lock her up? Yes. All's well that ends well. So uh, how do you feel about teachers having to sell cocaine to survive? I mean, that's just telling you that you're not paying teachers enough. <laughs> if she was a special education teacher and she still had to sell crack. She was, yeah, she wasn't. She was selling cocaine. She you know, was, uh, cocaine, crack, heroin, whatever. <laughs> Y'all ain't paying her enough. They're just not paying her enough. How, how many teachers in the Philadelphia school system do you think are selling coke? Probably all of them. <laughs> I mean... They ain't paying them nothing. They, they, they probably, if they not selling coke, they snorting coke. So it's kind of like the best job to have because <laughs> if you need to sell some coke on the side, you sell it to all your colleagues. And if you're looking for some coke, there's a good chance that your colleagues got it. So it's like a win-win. Yeah, all of them. I guess if the colleagues don't got it, the students got it. Well, the students can't bring it into the school. But they you have. Can't just We've like, had stories. You can't really just text your teacher like, yo, you need some coke. <laughs> you know what I'm that's, how the, that's how that Jesse Smollett <laughs> shit happened, man. Yeah, so nah. I you mean, don't think that would work out? Nah. So you, you walking down the hall, you tell the teacher, you're like, yo, I got that. I got that killer. I got that loud. Yeah, yeah and, then they, and then they call the police and get you locked up. Oh, it could happen. Selling coke after school. That's not about right. So I guess the thing is that they need to pay teachers more. Yeah, I think that's Instead the Instead of shaming of, the teachers. I think that, I think if she was getting paid 70, 80,000 a year to work with special education students, she wouldn't have to sell coke on the side. Oh. So that's, 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 that's where I'm sticking at with that. So teachers, um, Barksdale's telling you, if they're not paying you enough, <laughs> sell coke. <laughs> that's not good. Neither is them not getting paid. I mean, can they like sell, sell hair extensions on the side? Like, no, it don't come back like Coke money. <laughs> Dope money is good money. Yeah. Huh? I got you. I yeah. got you. So pay the teachers more. Gotcha. Or they gonna sell dope. <laughs> so I can't pronounce it, but it's some school in Ohio. Okay. They were, uh, so the uh, Ola, Olentangy? Local school district says that during a student cooking competition, students allegedly contaminated 
the food that they were serving to teachers judging the contest. Students are alleged to have put urine and semen into crepes fed to the teachers. That's disgusting. <laughs> I don't co-sign that shit, B. I don't like that shit, nigga. I don't like that shit. I had to drop a dime on them niggas. <laughs> How would you feel if there were students that during this nice little cooking competition went in the back and shook his slammer <laughs> and shot up and shot up your... This. You thought that was all cream cheese right there. For me, personally, I don't trust shit that kids bring anyway. <laughs> Or cook like if like so if you cook some shit and I ain't watch you cook it, you it, it, it all got piss or, or nut in it. I'm cool off of it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's like how they used to tell you back in the day. Don't just walk up and hit somebody blunt. You gotta make sure you see them roll that blunt. They might slip, slip you some woo, some you who's in there, some woo who's in there. So it's the same thing with food. You don't watch them kids cook that food, man. Them motherfuckers been done pour some ammonia in that shit. Like, you never know. Like, people be really be out here just selling platters. Just everybody. Cats be just eating platters. I, I, don't, go to nobody, I don't go to nobody <laughs> crib for them platters. Especially those angry, envious chicks that you might have had sex with a couple times and stop having sex with them. So then now you just try to be a good friend and support their business. And But they get mad that you moved on. So they want to hock a loogie in your shit. And I'm, no, no. Don't even, te- don't even tell me you selling platters. Why would that bother you? But I don't want them spitting in my I, food. I thought you, you know, you was on all that meat mill shit. What? Uh, having chicks spit in your mouth. What the fuck are you talking about on TV? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, first of all, what I just, it? I just want to be clear to to the whole <laughs> so unprofessional audience. Ish Barksdale is a wholesome. I just let a famous bitch spit in my mouth. God. <laughs> Nigga, you, you came in here the other week. I, Yo, you are a rat. <laughs> and I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> I'm about to report you right to King Erna. Live and direct. No, bro. No, no, no. I'm a wholesome, God-fearing, man to cap out for si. I don't cheat, and chicks don't spit in my mouth. Wait, Yo. So I guess the lesson learned in this story is don't eat crepes from students. Yeah, don't eat nothing from students. <laughs> what are you talking about? If, they, if a teacher, if a kid come in your classroom, hey, Mr. Gus, I bought you this soda. <laughs> it's a good chance he done spit and piss and did whatever he was going to do with that soda and handed it to you so the kids could geek off you all day while you drinking piss and poop. You know what I'm saying? Nah, bro, I don't trust nobody, kids, man. No. That's the, that's the moral of the story. Don't trust people, kids. So apparently there's a story. So there was a 16-year-old Malaysian boy. Okay. From Malaysia. Obviously, he's Malaysian. <laughs> so the story says the boy found a metal pipe protruding from the wall in his home. And it was the perfect height for him to... Wait a minute, somebody glory hold him? <laughs> that's what the fuck happened to the young boy? Well, there was no one on the other side. It was just a pipe. Um, and apparently he got stuck. Oh, he put his slim in there? <laughs> what the f- Yo! <laughs> said after, after trying to free himself, the boy eventually had to call his roommates for help. And they laughed and laughed yeah. and laughed. Yo, could you imagine that phone call? Yo, yo, bro. Yo, bro. What you doing right now? Yo, I need your help. What happened? He... Yo, I put my slam in the glory <laughs> hole and I can't get it back. You gotta help me get it out of there. But luckily, emergency services came and used a chainsaw and cut his. They cut his slim off? No. Oh. Cut him out the pipe. So apparently they didn't harm him. They just cut the pipe and. Yo. Ha- happily ever after. All that shit is just goofy. Like, of <laughs> all the things in the world to stick your dick in. <laughs> you see a hole in the wall with a pipe protruded, and you go put your dick in the pipe. Not me. That's what he did. Man, that shit crazy. They don't, people don't be caring about their dick, man. It's like uh, Lorena Bobbitt, right? Ain't that's her name? She cut the guy's penis off. Yeah, and sleep. 
How you how you get go to sleep and get your dick cut off? How you sleep through that? I think he was drunk or something. Yeah, all all that's crazy, bro. All that's crazy. So, moral, moral of the story. Moral of the story: keep your dick in your pants. <laughs> Not in pipes. Yeah, men in pipes ain't supposed to be happening anyway. Oh. What is he doing? Sword fighting? See, we wasn't even gonna go there. You know what I'm saying? Really Fuck it. It's a pipe, man. It's a pipe. And Malaysian, people, Malaysian people next to Asia, right? Malaysia is next to Asia, right? Maybe. Huh? Am I, yo? Cut it off, T. Cut it off. <laughs> Cut right? it off. Am I right? All right, we're going to bring the guest in. I just want to know, am I right? <laughs> bring the guest in. That shit close to Asia, right? <laughs> All right, so we back. Yes, we are. Special guest for the evening, Miss Toya. Toya Wiley. To, to, like Joe Wiley or Riley? Wiley. Wiley. Wiley, good job. Up and coming author with a fly book out. Yeah. Tell the people about yourself, Miss Wiley. Oh, thank you for the introduction, too. Um, you my didn't name is. Huh? Because you your, your, your introduction was corny. All right, thank you, <laughs> you. I'm going to thank Wolfie. No, I'm going to thank Wolfie. No, just thank the person that. <laughs> introduced you the right way. <laughs> Alright, so you guys, this is The Hand I Was Dealt, um, written by myself. The book is basically just about a young couple going from rags to riches and coming across many obstacles in life, mm -hmm. such as domestic violence, drug abuse, and overall fame. In this book, we just see how they overcome these things, and this is just a reflection of my personal experience with the media and the entertainment. So what happened? You was like domestically violencing a no. man? Uh, <laughs> so you think I'm whooping? You, 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 you think I'm not? Nah. I mean, we can't go and discriminate on this show. We might say socially improper things, but we don't discriminate. Because women can be abusers, This too. is the thing. I don't put my hands on men. But sometimes if you get on my nerves, my mouth might get slick. But I don't put my hands on you. So, and so in but the, I know how far to go. You know okay, all right. Yeah, I know how far to go. So in the book, her mouth got slick? It depends what you define as slick. Did it what, did it warrant the backhand that she got? Who said she got a backhand? Exactly. She said domestic violence. But how you know it was a backhand? Because as a man, sometimes your first reaction is to go f this way. Oh, is it? It's like a threat. Uh -huh. Mine isn't. Uh -huh. Mine. You don't look like mine is isn't to talk it out. And say, I, I know you look like to talk need, it out. He, he really, can't beat his wife though. <laughs> you, look like a, you look like a nice talking it out, brother. So I like, look. his wife will beat the brakes off him. He can't. <laughs> what we talk about? My wife, on the other hand. You a smacker? Hell no. She better not stab the shit out of me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not getting stabbed. No. Really not in the mood to get stabbed. No, up. we'll get stabbed in 2019. <laughs> like probably like 2002, 2003. It was a lot I took a little stab, stab. Like, no, You know what I mean? But these days, hell no. Mm -hmm. So how'd you get started? With writing being off or, being um, off with of. writing period. So I used to always write. Um, I've been writing since I was in middle school. Mm -hmm. But this book started off as a story for school, my mm -hmm. freshman year in college. And basically, my professor he didn't want to take it. He wanted to say it's too. It was, it was not what he was looking for, so he used the term urban. Mm -hmm. And I just kept it because I knew people could relate to the story that it was about. So okay. I just added to it, and then I looked up and I was like, I got a book. And so how long has the book been out? It's been out since August the 5th last year, 2018. And how's it been, how's, how's it been moving in Philly? But I, listen, I love everybody in Philly right now because the book is really, really, it's been doing great. It's been doing better than... I expected, and mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure people around me expected. I mean, we was projecting, like, to be honest, 100 copies. I'm like, we're going to sell 100 copies, and we're going to be good. You we sold probably, 100 like, copies yeah, we in probably, the first like, couple five, of days. Like, I'm like 550 in. This is just like horror copies. I don't count my Amazon or Barnes & Noble copies yeah. just because, I don't know. I just don't count those. I like counting physical books that people yeah. can um, touch, feel, and get And signed. so you pulling up on people with these books? or you I'll be, listen, I'll be, I'm be honest. If you know me, I'll be out anywhere with a book. Like, yeah. I'll be at the bar with a book. I, yeah. Anywhere yeah. I have a book. You see me, you know I got some books on Books me. and beer go together well. I listen, I sell books all the time. So if, like, even when I'm at the bar, you know how guys be trying to be all, like, fly and stuff? Like, what you drinking? I'll be like, I'm drinking this. Plus, I got a book. You mind what cop up? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's just like... Oh, you be uh, getting cash to buy books and stuff? You can't books. try to talk to me and not purchase a book. I feel like that's being rude, actually. 
I'm oh. just being honest. Especially when a guy, because listen, I was out, and this guy was like, I know you from somewhere. So I'm like, where you know me from? Asking him, like, where he's mm-hmm. from. Then he was like, what's your Instagram name? So he's like, you the off the chick. I'm like, yeah. Now, my yeah. book. Exactly. Like, you know, I'm the off the chick. So I thought that was the follow up question right at the lead yeah. up to it. I wish, it, I cool, wish it worked like that with everything, though. But what like, if they like, be like, what if she, yo, what if she approach a dude that sell crack? Nah, nah, I mean, nah, like, nah, she nah, got buy crack. Listen, this is the thing. It's a difference. She don't be with crack dealers. Hey, I sure don't. See, oh, Gus, sure you just always think so. You gotta so know your audience. No, Gus thinks the worst of <laughs> our race. Like, he's not a part of our race. Gus, he only, he only, the point he only said, that, he only said that sell coke shit because you dark skinned and he light skinned. You if know you, what? If you was yeah. light skinned, he would have never said that goofy <laughs> shit he just said. You and so, so this I do not says, believe in colorism. Like, I'm not so, with you. No, like, she's an <laughs> author and a highly educated woman. Why do you think she would be somewhere with people who sell crack? Because people who sell crack go everywhere. Do but they, they don't want to let everybody, this is the thing, if you really moving something out here, you don't want people just to know, because I could have been the cops. Like, they don't know, like, you just don't want people to know you're a no, crack dealer. Don't talk to Cuss. I'm just saying. You know what, it's okay. We right here, don't talk to Cuss. Just saying. So, um, I'm not talking. What, <laughs> what inspired you early on to, like, you know, start putting words on paper, like, you know what I'm saying? My environment. Um, mm-hmm. The way I grew up, honestly. So I was always a person that wanted to create a story because you can control the ending of mm-hmm. the story, you know? And I just felt like, I grew up reading Fly Girl, mm-hmm. the coldest one ever. I read all those classic books, but one thing I would say, they never represented black women, right? You okay. Know? And all the girls always looked the same, and it was mm-hmm. just like, that's not all of us. We got all, like, light skin or hair. Like, it's not, that's not every black chick. You started I'm just saying. Time. But I felt like I always wanted to write stories just about my environment. And then I'm a girl, so you know my girls and girlfriends be talking and having mm-hmm. some good conversations. We needed some good books to talk about, but yeah. So that's where I got it from. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so, um, is this book based on a true story? It was inspired by a true story. Inspired by a true story. It was story. inspired by a true and, story. And so is it your true story or you and your girl's true story? Or did you just like, look out your window and see somebody getting domestically violenced and then so you know i don't want to just focus on the domestic violence part because honestly well, well, well let me rephrase it let me reframe it not even with domestic violence but like you know how like like i don't know how if everybody does this but i know like some men you see a woman walking up the street mm-hmm. and you start telling her story and you never spoke to her. Right. Well, I don't know. I, I, maybe just No, just I know. Something. I know. I, you know I'm, I'm following you. I'm maybe, following you. Maybe it's just sure. something creative people do. Right. Like, you sit at a bar, somebody walk in, and they might be a little bit disheveled. And he walk in, the, and the lady walks in either after him right. or walked in two seconds right. in front of him. When he comes, he's like, oh, he just got finished getting some pussy. He right, might have right. just took a piss in the alleyway. Right, right, right. But just the way it all. Played out, right? You just start telling your own story, then the next thing you know. Well, my well, this book was actually like the overall. So I don't want to focus on just the dom- domestic violence part because the domestic violence comes with how can I put it? It comes in the story, but it's not just the overall story. A lot of young black women, yeah, a lot of women mm-hmm. and men mm-hmm. go to domestic violence, and what happens is they're embarrassed to talk about it, they yeah. shy from it, mm-hmm. and it's, it's like you look down upon them because you're stupid. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So I'm not speaking for myself. I'm not saying that I was getting my. Do you guys curse on here? Yeah, we do. I'm not saying I was getting my ass whipped. No, okay. but the overall story is the story about a woman losing herself in a man's career, mm-hmm. and I'm, that's where the story comes from. I was a woman who lost myself in a man's career because his career took off. You know what I'm saying? So that's where the story comes from. And as that as that happened, I do have friends and I do have people that I know. Who I put their their little parts of story inside yeah. of the big story. Inside, inside the you know character. what I'm saying? Yep. Because I was like, I gotta grab my audience. And for an example, you guys all have wives here. The story is about a, a husband and wife. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I might can be able to grab your wife's attention, but not grab your wife's attention because she might. I can't relate to certain things like that. But me and just a little piece from somebody else, like, oh, I got that. Been through that. You know what I'm saying? So let me just ask one question: Does the woman retaliate? I mean, I don't want to give too much away, okay. but it's like, if you read the story, it's one of those situations where you actually, let me just say this. Um, this story was really, really important to me because mm-hmm. it shows that sometimes something might look like a certain way, but you have to really dig into it and how our history affects how we are today. So once you look into it, you, while you saying retaliate, I don't really know what that is. 
to be honest with you. So like, Cause like you're doing something bad to a person just to get back at them, right? Yeah. But I wouldn't say like, I feel like if I'm getting myself together, that's not me getting back at you. Like if me and you started yeah. off dating and you was down and I was up and then you having to pull yourself up, that's not me really getting, you're not really retaliating them. You just getting yourself back together. You starting to see certain things. Mm. You feel me? So. Okay. So the book is more or less like two people coming of age and like learning from their mistakes and what you yeah, like learning. It's, just, it's definitely like learning from the mistakes. Um, I know before the cameras were rolling, I asked you guys what were your primary audience because as you read the story, everyone takes something different from it. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like I know a lot of, I work with artists, a lot of, everybody want to be famous. Everybody want to be famous. You got everybody want to rap, act, whatever. Everybody want to be famous. But what comes with that? Every a lot of girls I know want to date athletes. You know what I'm saying? They want to date the man, the baller, even if he an athlete, a rapper, or if he that guy on the block. Mm -hmm. They want to date the guy with the money and the status. But what comes with that? You tell me one thing that comes with that. What comes with it is more money. The more the more money a man have is the more options he have. With the more options, the more hard it is for him to be faithful and commit to you. When a man is put at a pedal, he's not a man, a person is put at a pedal stool or put like up on a certain level, how it's no longer easy to communicate with you because I'm the breadwinner, you're not the breadwinner. You know what I'm saying? And when I, if I come from a family, the difference if you're dating someone who comes from money, whereas though they was born with a silver spoon in your mouth, you know how to move because you used to money. Mm -hmm. But when you're not used to something, you don't know how to move. you just out here at this yeah. point. you just yeah. out here. And so is that one of the struggles that the, the, the couple yeah. go through? Yep, and the story basically get to see Sabir, mm -hmm. who was the main character, come from Philly, come from the, like really the hard streets of Philly. Mm -hmm. And we just get to see how he just like navigate going through the industry. Like I feel like we watched Meek come up, mm -hmm. you know? And we don't really know how Meek handle a lot of things behind closed doors. Let's shoot his homies, like, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It looks good on the outside, but in reality, is it yeah. really all good? No, I, of course not. I think, uh, I think whenever it's a spotlight on you, it's going to always be, you know, it look one way in front mm -hmm. of the spotlight, but then you deal with a lot of different demons when the lights go out. Right. And think about the women that, like, think about the women who are in some of these men's lives. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, you look at the Aisha Curry, like, she talking about, like, what she was saying about, like, her man getting all attention. Could you imagine being with someone like, and even if the person's not making you feel like that, the world is making you feel like that, like you're not good enough for this person, so. Nah, nobody can make me feel that way. I don't um, care if I was dealing with Holly Berry and I was making the type of money I'm making right now. Like, if Holly Berry chose me, and me and Holly Berry rocking, me and Holly Berry is rocking. But this is the thing. What if you, is, is a difference between getting with someone like you getting with somebody she's Holly Berry already mm -hmm. and you getting with someone and she becomes Holly Berry you don't see what the world see you just yeah. see the person I fell in love with when yeah. I was 14 15 yeah. yep. so you don't see the celebrity because mm -hmm. then they you still that guy yeah you still this person we yep. was like I'm giving I was giving you 20 dollars like yeah. you know what I'm saying so you that guy yeah you don't see the celebrity or you don't see the guy that everybody talking about in Philly you don't see mm -hmm. that so I mean is that happened People, it is. I mean, you can be the strongest person because I feel like I got so much confidence and, you know, keep myself together. Mm -hmm. However, when you got everybody talking about your relationship, yeah, it's not that easy as you might think. You I know agree. what I'm saying? People going to be like, why him? Why, like, what, what, I mean, people going to say that nowadays. But that's why. But you, could you imagine being with somebody like that? It's a difference. Trust me, it's a difference. I think it's, I think it's a difference, but then I just, I, you know, and I guess that just come with age, and I'm assuming that this is a young couple that you're writing about in the book, or at least it's starting off yeah. when they're young. And I think the, 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 the best thing about uh, being secure in yeah. who you are is just about being able to say, somebody say, why, why you? It's why not me? Yeah. You know what I mean? Why the why fuck not? I mean, I agree, you know, but I feel like everybody got to go through some things yeah. and really feel like you got to, I, I think everybody in this room can agree, you have to go through some things in life to really realize who you are. True I mean, I'm a, listen, I'm a living testimony. I've been through so much. Mm -hmm. I've been in relationships where it was like, it was a bad relationship, but I'm happy it happened. Yeah. Because if it didn't happen, A, I wouldn't have a book. Mm -hmm. B, I wouldn't really realize like, I'm really the shit of my eyes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because it took... You gotta go through things with these men and these, especially these men. You gotta go through things with oh, these whoa, men. Whoa, 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 yes. whoa. Plus, actually, bad relationships, like they help out. They do. Because with certain people, you did all the bad shit and then you don't give a fuck about them no more. 
So you don't have to go through the bad but shit. But in a bad relationship, person. I feel like this. I don't consider nothing bad. I feel like if I was dealing with a guy mm-hmm. and he did something for me, like you know, what I'm saying I got a little play I used to deal with. That's my little term for old boyfriend. Mm-hmm. Got a little play I used to deal with. Little play. And yeah, you little play or whatever. He's you know. I can't really speak. He still back. got you. Yeah, I know. He used yeah, to, he did. I ain't gonna lie to you. He said, used to deal with. She got this big old. No, we don't deal with each other no more. But this y'all is the thing. Y'all be dealing. No, 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 no. Because listen. You be thinking listen, about it. Y'all be dealing. I'm smiling because this, at the end of the day, I, like, you ever hate somebody, but you still love them. I can't talk bad on them because when, be I down, <laughs> no, 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 no. because when I was down. No, 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 no. Because when I was down. I ain't gonna lie, he made sure I was good. So you can't never talk bad on nobody that, that, that looked out for you. You can never talk bad on and them. And you can't never talk bad about nobody who be dealing. Dealin'. Mm-hmm. No, 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 no. <laughs> we don't deal no more, trust me, we don't deal no more. Well, can you stop grinning when you say that? Can, can you stop giving him all these teeth? <laughs> But you I give like him say, all the all 32 of them. Child, please. He ain't even making that little attention or whatever, but we don't deal with each other. No. You wasn't even <laughs> grinning that much when you talked about your book. Well, he was a, he inspired the book. So I mean, damn, I mean, I should be teasing thank you because he gave me a new hustle. Man. This is a new hustle for me. Yeah, like, he gave you that smile. Oh, that was he like gave that me that hustle. But on your side, when he also taught me how to hustle. So, like, without him, I wouldn't even know how to hustle. Like, I'm like, I was sheltered growing up. My, my mom and dad made sure, like, I just had everything. I didn't know how to really hustle. I didn't have that hustle spirit. Mm-hmm. So like with him, he's like, you got look, sure you gotta get out here and show you. You know what I'm saying? So now I know like I I'm hustling these books. So Hey man. So shout out to him. <laughs> we won't mention him or say his name, but shout out to him. Dang, you done said awesome. enough. You know, body language is talking more than you. Mm, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. But anywho, what's the next question? So so I have a question. Okay. What what lessons have you learned as an up and coming art uh, author? Lessons that I learned is that don't allow one no to stop you. I was trying to get this um, published by a big publishing company, got turned down a few times, and once I did my research, I realized like, thank God, like they turned me mm-hmm. down because then I get all my money straight through. So mm-hmm. learned that, and I just learned like you gotta really like you gotta really put yourself out here and believe in your product. I'm gonna be real honest. I have like a few authors that's like currently in my DM and I be telling them like, they be like, I want to give up. I'm like, girl, you ain't even do nothing to give up yet. You just started. Like, you just really just started. To me, I look at this book as like a hit record. Mm-hmm. You know, it took Tamar Braxton two years for Love and Word to become a hit record. Mm-hmm. No, one knew what the, no one knew what it was. Plus she can't sing. <laughs> Tay can sing. Don't come at my Tay Tay now. Wait, 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 wait. That's my girl. Don't come at my Tay Tay. Tay Tay can sing. But that's what I'm saying. Honestly, I look at it as a hit record. It takes sometimes it take a while for a hit record to really take off. Yeah, so with this, work it. I see a movie. You know what I'm saying? I see it changing like a whole generation. So that's what's up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If you make a movie, Barksdale wants to be at. Yeah. I got a part for you for sure. I got and I want to. I want to love. Can you be like Keem? Huh? Can you be like Keem? Oh, you really ready? Yes. No, Keem is a light skin. is a light skin guy. He looks like Sean. Why he gotta be light skin? Because he, he looks like Sean. He, he was gay. Who oh, Keem? No, he was no. just he was just sitting around helping helping out the chick and ain't getting none. No, 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 no. He was like he, he was like the little C's. You know, how, like Big said, little C's were little little C's was like the little bro or whatever. Yeah. That's how he is. That's how. So you think you think I'm somebody little bro? Well, I think he was like, yeah, I think he was trying to play you on the low, low. Yeah, he you know too. goddamn well. I ain't nobody, little bro. I'm big bro. <laughs> you I'm so bro, bro, man. Well, man, get your goofy ass big. out of here. <laughs> you already, I'm big bro. What you talking about? I mean, you big bro to other niggas, but. Nah, this Bark stuff. You right my here. young boy, man. You was always my like, young boy. Like, can I just say something? This bro, is- you like. You better get the fuck out of this young boy. Wait, <laughs> can, I, wait, can I just say something? So. Your nickname is Burks, though. No, it's my real name. Oh, really? You know, you're seeing Burks, though. You know what I was thinking about? The Wire. Wire. I was thinking about The Wire. I know. I love that show. I'm Me like, too. oh, I would start thinking about him and stuff, like personally. Yeah. I love him. He was like my baby. Yes. Oh, my God. I was just like, damn, was like, Burks, though. Is that like a nickname? Was yeah. he watching The Wire before he came? I don't know. No, nah, that's, that's, that's me, man. I earned that. You earned that? Oh, my yeah. God. I love this. Oh, my God. Yeah. I love that yeah. show. Yeah. You believe that was a fond brother of Aenea. Huh? I'm sorry, but you, I'm you believe in all this shit, huh? I mean, what? did you watch The Wire? No. I did. So Barksdale was like the big. I know who Barksdale is. And he was a fine. I'm talking he about he fine. Like, I follow him on Instagram, man. He is fine. He didn't look as good as he looked, but he is fine. Damn, fine. So you were saying, I'm sorry, the whole time I'm thinking. No, no, no. Gus was finding the reason to hate 
<laughs> we ain't paying attention. You just shit. lying to this woman. I'm, I'm, I'm not lying. We got a paperwork party. Oh, his name not Barksdale. My name is Barksdale. It's Teddy right there. Okay, okay, it's Teddy. It. So, Gus just hating. You talk about it after the camera go off. I don't want to embarrass him in front of the uh, audience. But all I was saying, y'all, was that I when he was seeing Barksdale the whole time, I was thinking, what is that guy name who played that? Ed Harris. Child, that was a fine, that was a fine man in the wild. Oh my God, but go ahead, I'm sorry. See, like, he the, he the fake 50 Cent. Ooh. Oh. When, like, he like the 50 Cent that got famous, when the real 50 Cent was, like, the real hustler, so. Oh, yeah, He's like 50 Cent took his name from someone. Uh, you believe that? I'm she just saying break that was, like. What is it, man? He from North New Jersey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah. from Jersey. I gotta go and watch that, I'm sorry. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. Yeah, go and watch the HBO. Yep. I was upset when they took him off. Go ahead. Don't listen to Gus, man. <laughs> all right, man. So, shout out all your social media. Let them know where they can yes. get the book. Okay, you guys can get the book at www.latoyawiley.com. I know I speak really fast, so I'm going to say it again. www.latoya, L-A-T-O-Y-A, W-I-L-E-Y.com. Also, follow me on social media at I am underscore Labella, L-A-B-E-L-L-A-T-O-Y. And thank you guys for having me. Yo, thanks for coming through, man. You know, now that you've been on the show once, like every time you do something, you write a book, or you got anything coming up, man, just come yes. through come through the show and, you know, use our platform to help push your platform forward however we can help. You know what I'm saying? And yes. that's a good look. And we just... Family. I'm for sure. I got, you know, you know I mean? working with some music artists. We'll talk about it afterwards, though. Making music, so. Making music? Thanks, so, Charlie. All right, so uh, we'd like to thank everybody for uh, tuning in to this uh, edition or episode. Yo, shut up. I'm trying to help you out. Don't help me. You look like you need some help. I don't need your help, nigga. Thank y'all for tuning in to this episode of uh, So Unprofessional Show. Our special guest, Miss Latoya Wiley, with the book. Check it out. Make sure y'all pick it up. Um, other than that, enjoy y'all Memorial Weekend. You know what I'm saying? Make sure y'all get turned up as much as y'all can and go to work on Tuesday. Can I say something now? No. Peace. <laughs>